Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a decision tree classifier to help distinguish between two or three types of classes. So it, when we use the word class, we're talking about types. And in this example, we're talking about three different flowers. We're talking about Sentosa, Versicolor, and Vir Virginica, which are all iris flowers who have different petal and sepal widths and lengths. So those dimensions are different for each one of those flowers. So we want to be able to look at those dimensions and predict which class or type of flower it is. So as you can see from the scatter plots that we have here, the scatter plots give us the dimensions, for example, petal width and petal length. And you can see we can easily classify the Sentosa uh, class by just the small length that's under, uh, looks like a length of two and under a length of one for width. Uh, so then for our sepal, we can see it gets a little bit more difficult because length uh, petal length and petal width, we can see that's the really defined classes here. And you can see by the different colors, which represent the different class. But you can see there's a lot of overlap with Versicolor and Virginica. Now, we know that if we didn't have three classes, we actually wouldn't need all of this. So we, if we only had, uh, let's say, Sentosa and Virginica, we can see there's a really defined difference between those two. And we don't really need to use much to distinguish those two. We can do those visually. But when we have this overlap, it gets a little bit more difficult. And we may need the help of a classifier, such as a decision tree, which helps to look at that and make decisions. So here's what a decision tree looks like. It looks quite complicated right now but remember if we simplified it to just those two classes it's quite easy so we can see that if the petal width is less than one if we go to the left we can see the class that is predicted is Sentosa and the class that predicted on the right which would be no uh, it would be Virginica. So this means no and left means yes. So anything under one is Sentosa and we can see for petal width uh, under one is Sentosa. So our classifier predicted that right out of the 99 samples. And then Virginica, we can see that anything over one for our Petal width would be Virginica, which would be correct. But if we add that complication or complexity back to our model, we can see by default we need to make a few decisions. So let's look at the data first to get an idea of what we're dealing with. And then I'll show you how I brought this data in and then also uh, use a machine learning classifier, a decision tree classifier, to bring everything in. So in our data, you can see we have the dimensions for our sepal, length and width. And for petal, we have the same dimensions, length and width. And then for our species, we have all of the different types of species. And you can see here we have three types. So those are our three classes. This is going to be our target variable while this is going to be our features that we're going to use to help us predict this class. So let me show you how I brought that data in first. So if I go back over to Home, go to Transform, we can see that data set table there. And if I go to Source, what I've used is I've imported uh, a Python script and I've imported Seaborn, saves it as a variable S and S. And then I use a data set variable and then I loaded in the data set 
function with SNS variable load data set and brought in our iris data set, which is our three flower types there. They're all irises. So then let me just go to close. And then we go back over to our visualize. You can see there is quite a complicated tree there. So let's examine that tree. We can see that there are one, two, three, four, five different levels here. So that's going to be the depth of our tree. And then we can see these splits, which are our decision nodes. So if I go back over and you know kind of zoom in, if I take off that VersaColor, you can see we have our, our predicted class and then our dimension. Uh, and then this gyne uh, is a measure, or gyne is a measure of um, how we split the actual tree. So that is going to be our measure to split the tree. It gives you the samples, and then it split those samples into uh, the specific set that it finds. So as that tree gets deeper, you're going to see smaller and smaller samples for each one. So let's look at how that brought in. So we're just using a Python visual. So let's open that up so we can just click on the decision tree classifier, go over, and you know that this is going to be in our visualization pane under Python. So I'm going to open up that script that allows us to bring that in. And let me take you through the script. So I've imported the packages here, and I've used the hashtag to indicate that. I've imported pandas as pd, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then from the sklearn.tree, I've imported our decision tree classifier. And then lastly, from sklearn, I imported tree, which is going to allow me to do the visual. So remember that when you bring in all of these different features or columns, they are going to create the data set. And that's why you have this uh, documented code here. And it tells you that your data frame is all of these specific columns. The next thing we want to do is define the features and the target. So our target is we want to be able to predict that class or that species or the type of iris. So that is going to be isolated with the species column. And we could do that with bracket notation and then just put that in our data frame and say that's what we want. And I use Y as my column of prediction, which is pretty default. And then for X, or all the features I want to use to predict the species, I only need to drop the species column with the drop function on our data set variable. And then I drop axis one, which is a column. Now what I want to do is add the labels. And the labels are just going to be all the names of the columns of this X variable. And then Y, which are the class names which we're trying to predict, I just take those unique values that are in that column, which is our species column. Next, what we do is we instantiate the model. So we call the model using the decision tree classifier. And I save that as model. Next, what I want to do is I want to fit or let the model learn the data. So I'm just passing in X and Y. Now, usually when we're doing machine learning, we want to break that up into training and test set. But we'll do that in the class. This is just an example how to visualize things. So the model is fitting to the features, which is X and Y, which is a target. And you can name it features and target if you want. Then we visualize a tree doing the tree variable that we brought in here and doing plot tree. We pass in our model that it's already learned the data here. We give the feature names, which are the labels here, which are the column names. Class name is going to be the unique values, the classes in that uh, species column. Then I want to fill the actual boxes to make them color. And then I just show that. And now what we get by default is these 
five different uh, nodes or depths that we can look at. Now, what we can do, we can alter that. We can go over and we can pass in a parameter called max underscore depth. And then let's say I only want two. And I run that. And let's see what happens to our decision tree. And now we only have two. So this gives us an indication of that split. And we know that it's really easy to find the uh, Sentosa here. But then when we get to finding out the difference between VersaColor and Virginica, we need to do a little bit of work. So then what we can do is we can either give it the length of the depth of the tree or we can let it decide on its own. So then what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go and put in five here and just run that. And then you can see we get all of those decisions there. So I hope that helped you to learn how to visualize and quickly use a decision tree classifier. We'll get more in depth in this in the class, uh, but this is a quick and easy tutorial. I hope that helps. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.